Hello, this is Melissa from the Center for Instructional Technology with a recorded edition of our Blackboard Basics for Instructors webinar. This session covers Blackboard Basics, navigation and functions outside of and across courses, and common tasks within a course, creating content, communicating and interacting with students, conducting assessments, managing grades, and using integrated instructional technology tools, such as Panopto, Hypothesis, and Publisher Content. The Center for Instructional Technology is a unit of the Office of Information Technology, and we support faculty, instructors, staff, graduate students, and undergraduate students in their use of UA's instructional technologies. CIT also guides the university's efforts to meet the technology accessibility needs of all users, including persons with disabilities. This slide includes some of the ways you can get in touch with us. We're located in A203 Gordon Palmer. A203 is on the second floor in the back portion of the building known as the Annex. Our website address is cit.ua.edu. There you'll find information about us and the technologies we support. You can search our knowledge base for quick answers to frequently asked questions, step-by-step -step guides with pictures, and links to relevant vendor documentation. We encourage you to visit us online to submit help requests, join a workshop or webinar, and subscribe to news updates. You can also reach us by phone at 205-348-8532 or email at cit at ua.edu. Blackboard Learn is the University of Alabama's Learning Management System, or LMS. For most instructors, it serves as a home base and entry point to manage and conduct teaching and learning activities. You can use Blackboard Learn to create and deliver course content, communicate and interact with students, conduct assessments, manage grades, and utilize dozens of integrated instructional technology tools. UA users can access Blackboard Learn through MyBama or uaLearn.blackboard.com. UA's instance of Blackboard Learn uses ultra-based navigation in conjunction with original and ultra courses. UA instructors now have the opportunity to explore Blackboard Learn Ultra course view through a CIT-led pilot. You can find more information about that on our website at cit.ua.edu. Let's take a look at Blackboard. So I've accessed UA's instance of Blackboard Learn via the URL, uaLearn dot blackboard dot com and that's what you're seeing on my screen now. From the moment you log into Blackboard Learn, you have access to a consistent set of core features in the list in the left sidebar where your name appears. This is referred to as Blackboard Ultra Base Navigation. UA currently uses Blackboard Learn with Ultra Base Navigation with original course view. We are piloting a small number of ultra course view courses. You can easily return to this list from wherever you are, even if you're in a course. The list peaks from behind the other layers that you have open. I'll show that now. I'm selecting courses from the left sidebar to access the courses page. On the courses page, I'm selecting a course I've favorited titled Blackboard for Instructors. The course opens in in this case, original course view uh, in a layer on top of the ultra base navigation. When I'm finished working in the course, I can close the course view and return to that core list of features available ac across Blackboard. As I mentioned before, ultra base navigation brings to the surface activity from across your courses. So this courses page lists all of your courses, the activity stream provides notifications about activity from across courses. The grades tool uh, would alert me to grading tasks, again, across all of my courses. That's really the, the beauty and the advantage of ultra-based navigation. 
I'm returning to the institution page by clicking the link at the top of the list in the left sidebar. The institution page is the first feature in the list and the home page for UA's instance of Blackboard Learn. Here you can view important news from CIT and our campus partners and access helpful information and resources. The next item in the Ultra Base Navigation feature list is your profile. Select your name to access your profile. Your profile appears with some pre-populated information. You can delete your profile and UA users are only able to change select profile information. The next item in the list, the activity stream, is my favorite ultra-based navigation feature. It essentially allows you to see up to the minute action for all of your courses. You can see what's new in all of your courses and jump directly into course activities from the list. Activity stream items are grouped into categories to make the list easier to scan. I'll bring up a slide with some examples of those categories. The four categories of activities are important, upcoming, today, and recent. Under the important heading, students see overdue assignments, tests, and graded discussions that need their immediate attention. If a student dismisses an item in this section, they won't see that notification again. When they dismiss a stream item, the original content isn't affected. So for example, the assignment doesn't go away, but the reminder that it needs to be completed, the overdue reminder is removed from the activity stream. It's kind of like swiping to dismiss a notification on your phone. Everything happening and due in the next 24 hours is grouped in the today section, including institution-wide announcements. If you add course announcements with a date associated with them, they appear here or in the recent section for students. After appearing in the today section, events move to the recent section for several days following. Students always see reminders about overdue work in the important section. There is an additional category of events upcoming for events happening in the coming days. This section isn't included in the example on this slide and doesn't appear if you don't have upcoming events. Let's return to our live demo. You can filter your view of the activity stream. Use the filter menu and choose show all, assignments and tests, or grades and feedback. You can also control what activity appears in your stream. On your activity stream page, select the stream settings represented by a gear icon to open the notification settings panel. You can also access these settings from your profile page. Notifications for due dates and items ready to grade always appear in your stream. Some of the other types of activities for which you can choose to receive notifications are, I have a slide showing some of these. So some of the activities that instructors can choose to receive notifications for are um, announcements, content additions, um, of particular interest to instructors, new gradable items, grades needing reconciliation, student performance alerts, um, any activity happening in the course that an instructor might want to know about, you can um, set up a notification for that. So again, those settings are all happening in the activity stream notification settings panel. So you'd make your selections here in order to uh, decide what appears in the stream. To receive email notifications, select the email notification settings tab to open the panel. Choose how often you want to receive emails for activities in your courses, right away or once a day. If you choose once a day, all notifications are collected and sent once a day in a daily digest of sorts. In the notify me by email about these activities lists, 
you can choose which notifications you want to receive by email. If you don't want to receive any email notifications, clear all of the checkboxes. You can opt to receive SMS text messages on your mobile phone. You'll do that by selecting the SMS notification settings tab to open the panel. I just did that. You'll add a phone number to your profile page, then choose which activities you want to receive notifications for. Available choices for instructors are new grades and feedback, new gradable items, and new messages. Clear all of the checkboxes if you don't want to receive SMS text messages about the activities in the list. Push notifications are sent to a mobile device where you have the Blackboard Instructor app installed. You can manage which push notifications are sent to your mobile device from the push notification settings tab. You can also manage push notifications in the Blackboard Instructor app. I'm navigating to the courses page by selecting courses from the left sidebar. On the courses page, you can access all of your courses. And I should have mentioned this earlier in the webinar, but I have um, a, a number of roles at UA. I'm a staff member, I'm an adjunct instructor, and I'm a graduate student. So in my instance of Blackboard Learn that we've been looking at, we're seeing courses and activities that I may be involved in in any one of those role, roles. Um, so I have a rather long course list. And again, it's uh, because I kind of have worn or am wearing a lot of hats at UA. So on this courses page, you can access all your courses. Each course card lists the course ID, course title, and instructor. If your course has multiple instructors, select multiple instructors for a list. Select more info to see a description and schedule if that's been added. You can filter or short search this list. Uh, use the filter menu to modify your view of the page. Your filtered list stays as you access courses. If you navigate to another page, all the courses will show again. Use the search function to find courses, courses on the current page. You can browse by term, move to past, current, and upcoming courses. You can choose how many courses appear on each page. And at the bottom of the list, you'll find a page selector to allow you to move through pages. If you access a course frequently, you can add it to your favorites by clicking on the star icon. So these are courses that I've already added to my favorites. Here's a course I haven't added. If I wish to add it, um, I would select the star icon. This is so helpful, no more scrolling. Um, it is a way for you to essentially pin your most frequently accessed courses to the top of the list. Here you can also manage your courses. Um, I'm going to select that option for the Blackboard for Instructors course, uh, the three dot more menu. I can choose to make this course private or hide the course. To make a course private, um, or you, you might want to make a course private while you add content, while you're building the course. Um, and then open it to students when you're ready. Students will see private courses in their course list, but they can't access them. Hide allows you to hide a course from your course list to organize your view. Um, activity for hidden courses no longer appears in the global pages about all your courses, such as grades. Only instructors have the option to hide courses. To show a hidden course, you can filter the list to hidden from me. I don't have any of those right now, um, but access the course and select show course. So a number of different options here for course management. If you have any questions about that or how they impact students, please reach out to us. You can change your view of your courses page. Um, you can view it as a list, which is what we're seeing here, or as a grid. I'm toggling to the grid option now. In grid view, you can customize the image 
on your course cards. I'm going to open the menu in the top right corner of a course cards image and select edit course image to upload a new image. And here you receive some guidance on uh, the size of the image and other things to keep in mind when you add the course image. Um, you can also add this image as a banner within the course and it will show on the course card. The next item in the list, organizations, is not currently in use at UA. The next item is calendar. I think I said before that activity stream is my favorite ultra-based navigation feature. The global calendar is a close second. Uh, when you access the calendar from inside a course, it shows events for that course only. But when you select the base navigation calendar tab, as I have, you can view all course, organization, institution, and personal events and due dates in one, plus, one place. Plus you gain two-way sync with external calendars. All events you create within a specific course roll up into this global calendar. And some things you might do with the global calendar include choosing your view. So uh, right now we're on the day view. You can choose month to plan for the weeks ahead. You can select just due dates to focus only on upcoming deadlines or schedule to see all items. Select the calendar settings icon represented by a gear in the upper right corner to choose the calendars you wish to display here. So I mentioned before, I have a long course list. Um, it, some of this could clutter up my calendar if I wanted to clear all of those and just uh, show my current, current courses, I could do that. All events you create within a specific course roll up into the global calendar. If you want to add events to the calendar from here, um, you'll simply select the plus sign to add an event, you choose the calendar you want to add it to, whether it's your personal calendar that just you see or one of your course calendars to share this with your students and make your other selections and then save. Students cannot delete or move events that you added. You can connect your Blackboard Learn calendar with external services via the share calendar link. I'll show you where to find that. It's under the calendar settings represented by gear, the three dot more menu. You can choose add calendar. To add an external calendar file to your Blackboard Learn calendar, for example, a UA events calendar file. And then as I was saying, um, do share calendar to view your Blackboard Learn Calendar events in an external calendar service like Outlook um, or Google Calendar. Moving on to messages, you and your students can send messages to each other, uh, multiple people or an entire class. Messages activity remains inside the system and you don't have to worry about email addresses that may be incorrect or outdated. Since I don't have any unread messages, I'm going to switch to a slide for this. The most recent messages for each course appear first. New messages appear in a bold font. You can access messages across time, uh, viewing messages for current, previous, and future courses, using the arrows to navigate to another time period. Uh, for example, view messages from a past course that you want to reuse. You can select a course card to jump into your messages, viewing all new and existing messages in your course. You can delete these messages once you're inside of your course. When you're ready to share, you can select the new message icon in a course card to send a message to one person, multiple people, or a class.
I'm now moving on to the grades page. With the global grades page, you can see in one place across all of your courses what needs grading, grades that are ready to be posted, and the average course grade. You can select an item's title to open it in a layer, choose a submission, and start grading. If you participate in courses as an instructor and a student, this page shows information for both roles and courses appear together in alphabetical order. The next item on the list is ASSIST, which serves as a hub for student success resources. Sometimes this page is a little slow to load. I'm going to give it a second. So here is our hub for student success resources um, with information about how to access support through us and the IT service desk, as well as instructional technology and other help um, across campus, writing center, student care and well-being, and so on. A hub for student success resources. The next to last feature or page in the list is tools. The tools page provides access to tools outside your courses and across Blackboard, such as the content collection and third party tools. Finally, the final item in the list is sign out, which you'll want to be sure to choose if you are using a shared computer. So, so far, we've been looking at the Blackboard Learn experience outside of and across courses. Now we'll turn to some basics of working with course content. To access a course, I'm navigating to the courses page, then clicking on the course card. The course I'm accessing for our demonstration is titled Blackboard for Instructors, so I'm selecting that now. This is a quick overview of what a Blackboard Learn original course looks like. Your course might appear slightly different than mine. For example, if you're following a department or college template or course structure, um, if you made different choices about your course entry page, for example, I set my announcements page as my course entry page, it might look a little different, um, but the tools and features available to you and the workflow for using them should be the same. But when you access a course, the course menu appears on the left side of your course window, and this is your user's access point for all course content. I'm hovering over the add menu item function represented by a plus sign. You can use this to create links on the course menu to present tools and materials to users. You can customize the menu's appearance by adding subheadings and dividers and you can also reorder the menu's contents. Students see the top portion of this menu, uh, everything from the name of the course down to course management is visible to students. When you enable edit mode, which is on right now, uh, you see the instructor controls. If you'd like to see what students see when they access your course, you can enter the student preview mode in order to do that. You'll do that by selecting um, the student preview icon, it's an I, to turn on student preview. And again, that's just showing that um, a lot of those course menu links that I saw as the instructor are not actually visible to students, which is good because that's how I intended it. I'm going to exit the preview now. I'm going to access one of the pages in my course. Um, in this case, I'm going to um, what I called a module, module one, the topic of which is accessibility, universal design, and universal design for learning. Regardless of where you are in Blackboard or what type of page it is, you typically access page level functions 
um, above the content in the course. Um, these are sort of co contextual and will change depending um, where you are and what you're trying to do. Um, but some of the page level functions are build content, assessments, tools, and partner content. If you're working with existing content, you can access the menu next to individual content items in order to edit those. Um, I know a lot of us start with a template course or maybe a course copy from a course another instructor developed and might be editing existing content rather than adding new. This is how you do that. You wanna click that down arrow uh, chevron next to each item title and you'll get the options to edit that item there. Let's talk about adding content. There's lots of different approaches, um, but they all essentially begin the same way. You create a container to organize and present your content. Then within that container, you create content from menus for content items, tests, assignments, and links to tools. So my course provides access to content through content areas. Content areas are top level containers that provide your course structure. Uh, typically, courses contain multiple content areas. This page, Accessibility, Universal Design, and Universal Design for Learning is a content area. Uh, within each content area, you can add any number of types of content. I'm clicking on Build Content to show that you can add text, audio, video, images, links, publisher resources, hypothesis-enabled readings, grade scope assignments, and many, many more. In addition to the options under the Build Content menu, there are options under Assessments, Tools, and Partner Content. Other types of content containers are module pages and blank pages. Both can contain content items and other containers. Content areas only appear on the course menu where you create, link, and manage them. So let's say I wanted to add another content area to this course um, in addition to the seven that are here. The way I would do that is go to the add menu item icon to open the menu, choose the option to create a content area, give the content area a name, and then choose whether or not to make that content area available to students. A couple of different approaches here. Some folks um, keep their course open and hide individual content areas as they're working on them. Others wish to keep their course private while they're working on it. Um, go ahead and, and make everything available except the course itself. Um, and then when it's time for students to be able to access the course, open it up that way. Either way works. Um, two different ways to, to restrict access to content. After you submit, a link to the new content area appears in the course menu. Um, a newly created content area is an empty container and you uh, simply select the link to get to it and start adding content. Let's turn to announcements. Uh, announcements are an ideal way to post time sensitive information such as due dates for assignments and projects, changes to your syllabus, corrections and clarifications of materials, exam schedules, and so on. This is the announcements page in my course. So you can see uh, announcement that I previously posted. To create additional announcements or to get started creating announcements, you'll want to select announcements in the Control panel. Under course tools. And then select create announcement. You'll type a subject which appears as the title of the announcement on the announcements page. Type your message and use the functions in the content editor to format the text and add images and multimedia. In the web announcement options section, choose whether or not to restrict the announcement by date and whether or not to send students an email with the announcement. 
Optionally, in the course link section, you can select browse to link to a course area, tool, or item. And finally, when you're ready to publish the announcement, select submit. You can edit and delete existing announcements from the announcements page. Again, across Blackboard, if you want to work with any given item, a good way uh, to look to start is looking for that more menu next to the items title, which is how you would access announcements to edit or delete. I mentioned before that you can set this announcements page as your course entry point. You do that by going to customization, teaching style, and under select course entry point, you would then choose announcements. Um, again, not, not a, the best choice for everyone, depending on your course and how you use the announcements tool, but um, it was a great choice for me because I make heavy use of that tool. Let's move on to discussions. Discussions are a popular type of course content. Discussions are a good way to encourage students to think critically about their coursework and interact with each other's ideas. The main discussion board page provides a global view of all available forums. So we can see here discussion forums that I've already added to the course, Q&A forum and a forum for each module in the course. You can create forums here. You can search for items within existing forums, assign grades to grade contributions to the forum if you've uh, set up your discussions that way, um, jump to collections to unread posts, lots that you can do with announcements. Let's go through some assessment options. To add an assessment, um, let me first get to a content container. I'm going back to my accessibility UD and UDL page. To add an assessment, you select assessments above the page body, which I'm doing here. And you can add the following types of assessments, test, survey, assignment, self and peer assessment, and McGraw-Hill assignment. You can create tests to test uh, student knowledge. This module one review quiz is actually a test. I'm clicking on the menu next to the item name to edit the test so that you can see some of the available options. Many different types of questions are available. Multiple choice, true, false, matching, calculated essay, and many more. Looking at the other types of assessments, Survey is essentially an ungraded test. You can use surveys to poll student opinion and conduct class evaluations. Survey results are anonymous. Within assignments, you can create coursework and manage the grades and feedback for each student separately. You can create assignments in content areas, learning modules, and folders. When you create an assignment, a grade center column is created automatically. I'm accessing the grade center from the left sidebar. I'm going to expand this just to show you can go to the full grade center um, or just items that need grading. I'm going to the full grade center. In the full grade center, or needs grading page, you can see who submitted their assignment and start grading. Students access their grades from their My, My Grades page or the assignments review submission history page. I don't have any grade data for this course, so let me show you what the Grade Center looks like when it has some data in it.
So this is the full center showing, full grade center showing all students assignments and tests. Grade center setup is highly variable depending on the nature of your course and assignments. In addition to individual assessments, you can create group assignments and release them to one or more groups in your course. Uh, each group submits one collective assignment and all members receive the same grade. You can create a single assignment and assign it to all groups or create several unique assignments and assign them to individual groups. A course group must exist before you can create group assignments for it. Grade center setup, assignment setup varies uh, depending on the nature of your course and assignments. A member of our team is happy to review your grade center setup by appointment. We suggest you do that before you start grading. That's a high level overview of basic functions in Blackboard Learn. Because every course and instructor is unique, we anticipate you'll have some questions for us. So I'll close here with a reminder of how you can get in touch with us. The Center for Instructional Technology is located in A203 Gordon Palmer. A203 is on the second floor in the back portion of the building known as the Annex. Our website address is cit.ua.edu and there you'll find information about us and the technologies we support. You can search our knowledge base for quick answers to frequently asked questions, step-by-step -step guides with pictures and links to relevant vendor documentation. And if you can't find one you're looking for, submit a help request. We also encourage you to visit us online to join a workshop or webinar and subscribe to news updates. You can also reach us by phone at 205-348-8532 or email at cit at ua.edu. I wish you all a great semester.